What is up guys and we are back with another video and it's officially confirmed Inazuma is going to be coming next in 2.0 and oh my god does it look stunning. So I'm coming fresh off watching the live stream so I'm just going to summarize it with the important stuff that I thought you guys would want to know but if you guys want to watch the official live stream and the entirety of it then feel free to check out the official Genshin YouTube channel I'm going to link it down below but let's go ahead and just jump into it. And the live stream first started off by showing the different areas in Inazuma and honestly they all look so beautiful and so stunning. And unlike Monsta and Liyue, there's something about Inazuma, it just feels more mysterious, it feels more mystical, kind of like Dragon Spine, but to a bigger degree, so I'm super excited about that. And along with the new areas, we get a sneak peek at Electro Traveler with his or her new abilities. Again, I already have my Traveler level to 90, so I'm super ready for this. And I'm sure after Inazuma comes out, a bunch of you are going to level up your Traveler as well. And then we also get a glimpse of all the new characters that are going to be coming with Inazuma. The very first one being Ayaka. We get to see Toma. I hope I'm saying these names right because I don't want to slaughter them. We get to see Yomiya as well as Sayu who are going to be coming together in 2.0 after Ayaka. And we also get a glimpse at future Inazuma characters coming. This includes Sarah, who's basically confirmed to be an Electro Bow user, as well as Garo, who's confirmed to be a Geo Bow user. And honestly, I'm pretty hyped for both because when I first saw Garo's like leaked images, I thought he was just going to be like a Diona-esque personality, but my guy's actually looking pretty tough. He's a general out here, you know, he's carrying his load, looking pretty awesome. And then we also get to see a new Hydro character, Kokomi, who makes this fabulous entrance. Honestly, she looks so out of place here, but she still looks super cool with her entrance, so I'm not complaining. And throughout the intro cinematic, we kind of see flashes of some sort of catastrophe happening because there's this moment where Traveler's standing in front of what looks like a black hole. And then towards the end, we see the Raiden in action. And oh my God, does she look amazing. She's pulling a sword out of her chest. The animations around her look amazing. It looks like she's kind of like cracked space and time, but there's this quick flash of someone throwing a vision towards the Raiden. And it actually looks like the Traveler is jumping in front of the vision to protect the Raiden. So I'm super excited for the story as well as the lore. But yeah, Raiden Shogun in action looks absolutely stunning and I'm super excited. And they basically confirmed that she's a sword user as well. And then basically after the intro cinematic, they talked to different developers about the different aspects of Inazuma, such as the area, such as the design, such as the music and culture as well as history. So if you guys want to deep dive into all of that, make sure to check out the live stream on the official Genshin YouTube channel. I'll link it down below, but I'm just going to be covering the stuff I think that's important. They also talk about the pacing in Inazuma because unlike Monsta and Leeway, which were all introduced at once, they haven't confirmed or denied if they're releasing Inazuma all at once because they want the players to enjoy the content as well as the gameplay, but they don't want everyone to finish it in like a week. So they want the ability to keep adding new content to the area. So I don't know if this means that some stuff is going to be locked and we're going to unlock it later or if they're just going to add new areas like Dragon Spine and stuff like that, but it is something interesting to note. In terms of Inazuma itself, there's going to be a lot more unique puzzles as well as challenges throughout Inazuma to get chest. And unlike Monsta and Leeway, where you need specific elements to activate different pillars, they're removing that entirely. So we're not going to need like a pyro element to activate a pyro pillar. It's just going to be unique puzzles and challenges. And I think it looks really fun. They also confirmed that the very first Archon quest in Inazuma is going to relate to Ayaka and we're going to meet her, which makes sense because she's the very first Inazuma character that everyone heard about. So her being our introduction to Inazuma just lines up perfectly. And again, they talk about all the different areas in Inazuma. One that stood out to me a lot was the one with the serpent skull. And that's because it's basically an island split in half. And that's because Raiden Shogun basically sliced the island in half when she was fighting the serpent. So I'm super excited to see that as well as all the other different areas because they all look like they have their own lore and history. And then we get our first look at Ayaka as well as her gameplay and her abilities. And they basically confirm that Ayaka is going to be the first banner in 2.0. And then following that is going to be Yomiya as well as Sayu on the same banner. And they also show Yomiya and Sayu gameplay as well. And they talk about the Electro Archon who's going to be a key figure in the story as well as Ye who also is going to be a key figure in the story. And I'm going to be honest, I was kind of skeptical about the Electro Archon's appearance, but when she's animated and she's moving and her eyes are actually moving instead of a still image, she looks absolutely awesome. And Ye has always looked awesome and she looks even better in the live stream. And then they finally talk about all the events that are coming in 2.0. There's one main event where we're going to be rewarded with a free Beidou. And then there's going to be a bunch of side events that we've already done before, such as Theater Mechanicus, as well as the Sealy event where you get a free Sealy. And then we have Leyline Overflow as well as Phantom Flow. Leyline Overflow being where you get double rewards three times a day. And then Phantom Flow where you just go around and do some challenges and you get Primo Gems, you get Mora, you get Ores, you know the usual. They don't really delve into the specifics about the main event. All we know is we're going to be getting a free Beto as a reward. 
They also introduced a new gardening system. So basically every time you pick up a plant, you're also gonna get a seed and you have the ability to plant that seed inside your teapot. And it takes a good amount of time to grow. Honestly, it's the same amount of time that it takes to grow in the overworld of Genshin Impact, around two days and a couple hours. So it's just extra plants that you guys can pick up and good for farming materials for characters that are coming out. We also get a look at all the different monsters and enemies coming in Inazuma that are very unique from Mondstadt and Liwei. It looks like we're going to have a bunch of different variants of Wuengard enemies. Looks like they're going for like the Horizon Zero Dawn approach where Wuengards can be a bunch of different animals slash monsters. Hopefully we don't have a Wuengard Geo Bishop because that's just going to be uh, a basically a nightmare. Or a Wuengard Oceanid. Oh my god, I cannot imagine. Aside from the Ruin Guards, we see the Pyro Hypostasis, as well as the Electro Hilichuro, and then we also see Samurai looking dudes walking around. We see a Pyro one, as well as an Electro one, and honestly, the Electro Samurai's weapon kind of looks like the 5-star weapon that's coming out, so hopefully when we defeat him, he actually drops his 5-star weapon and we get it for free. JK, MiHoYo would never do that. And then we get our first look at the Mirror Maiden and how fine she is. Honestly, MiHoYo knows what they're doing with Mirror Maiden because they basically admit that she's pretty good looking and she's gonna distract you while she kind of slaps you across the field. But on the bright side, unlike the Cryo and Electro Sissin Mage who are just a pain in the butt, the Hydro Sissin Mage is probably also gonna be a pain in the butt, but honestly, I wouldn't mind losing to her. So with the introduction of Inazuma, obviously there's gonna be an introduction of Inazuma themed craftable weapons, which is gonna be super exciting. Hopefully they're actually usable, unlike some of the weapons we have now. And then they introduced the new 5-star weapons, which are also coming in 2.0. I'm pretty sure they're gonna be on separate banners, but you know, it's a dream of them being on the same banner. On the bright side, one exciting thing that I didn't see coming is they're actually optimizing the weapon banner. And basically how this new weapon banner mechanic is gonna work is you're gonna choose one of the two rated up weapons and whichever one you select is gonna have a mini soft pity. So basically the soft pity is called fate points. So every time on the weapon banner, if you don't get the weapon that you chose, you're gonna get a single fate point. And then once you get two fate points, the next weapon you pull is gonna be guaranteed to be the weapon that you chose. So honestly, this still doesn't make it super free to play friendly and like the best thing for a casual player, but for people that like to spend money, at least you won't have to spend an infinite amount and you actually have a set amount before you get the weapon you want. Because say you miss the 50-50 and you get an off banner weapon, that's gonna give you one fate point. And then say you get the 50-50, but you don't get the weapon you want, that's gonna be another fate point, meaning the third weapon you pull is gonna be the weapon you want. That's worst case scenario. Honestly, I know it's not super free to play friendly, but I'm just glad that they listen and they actually address the weapon banner instead of just leaving it as is. I think that's a huge step in the right direction. And aside from the new weapons, there are going to be two new artifact sets. One is going to be revolving around energy recharge as well as your elemental burst. And then the second set is going to be revolving around how much energy you have as well as your normal charge and plunge attacks. They also introduce a new artifact mechanic where you can sacrifice three artifact pieces for a new one. And then the new one, you can choose which set you want out of four sets. They didn't really say which four sets, but I'm pretty sure it's Gladiator, Wanderer's Troop, Bloodstain, and Noblesse Oblige. And they also didn't confirm if this is going to require resin or not. So hopefully this is a good mechanic. I don't know how I feel about it because using three artifact pieces for one is a waste of artifact XP in my opinion. But if it's a cool mechanic, I'm super excited. And that's pretty much what they ended it with, guys. Again, if you guys want to see the full live stream, I'm going to link it down below in the description box. So feel free to check it out. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything too important. If you guys feel like I missed anything, feel free to comment down below and I'll make sure to highlight it. But thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.